towards this end, once more, it is really a wonderful day because the mantra for an individual's or an industry sector or a country's economic growth and success is like a domino's effect. To fuel this, the need of the hour is to empower human energy endeavor with emerging technology that is transforming the way we live, learn, and work. The best way to educate and skill, as often said by my mentor, Professor Sanstrabhote, is just not by enabling the basics, but to be empowered vis-a-vis -vis applications across cross-functional industry sectors. And in this regard, as you all know, collaboration is key. By creating a digital skill in development and on-demand skills and a continuous learning framework and bringing in internship and employment opportunities to students, this is the mantra for today's engagement. This will help students from becoming passive learners to becoming active participants in their educational experience and in their communities and subsequently in their careers across various industry opportunities. Towards this end, AICT, NASCOM Future Skills Prime, in partnership with our bellwether company, Microsoft, is launching its virtual internship program, Future Ready Talent. This is focusing on few of the emerging tech like cloud computing, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, the details you will get thereafter. This unique collaboration between industry and government will help build a pool of skilled talent for the future and the pipeline hopefully will propel India as a superpower in the future. Thank you so much. Over to you again, Mehenka. The next uh, speaker is speech and address will be by Professor Anil Dattaraya Sahasrabuddha, who is the Professor of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Guwahati, and is currently the Chairman of All India Council for Technical Education. Professor Sahasrabuddha has held several important academic, research, and administrative positions at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Tata Consulting Engineers, Northeastern Regional Institute of Science and Technology, Itanagar, Arunachal Pradesh, and IIT Guwahati. He has also served as Director, College of Engineering, Pune, since 2006 on deputation from IIT Guwahati, prior to joining as AICT Chairman. As an academician and researcher in NERIST and IIT Guwahati, and as an administrator in the capacity of Director, College of Engineering, Pune, he has taken up several new initiatives for academic, curricular, and co-curricular activities entrepreneurship, research, and good governance. He is chairman, basic scientific research, empowered committee of UGC and SWAI. it's too, too long, we should cut short. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Dr. Yeah. Very good morning to you all. Uh, I'm very excited to be in this particular platform today when we are talking about future ready talent. And Dr. Sandhya, you really beautifully explained, you know, the logistics and why we are doing it in order to make India really data ready, you know, in terms of future ready, whatever you call, use the talent that we have in the right manner. We have with us, uh, you know, Kirti Seth also, who has been spearheading now NASCOM, you know, in some way. So she has been associated with AICT. And we have companies like Microsoft, GitHub, each one of them have been engaged with AICT in some way or the other during uh, the last several years. But this particular initiative, when we talk about future ready talent, training of our engineers who are graduating in terms of all the new areas and emerging areas is very important. And that's where future skills of the you know, NASCOM is also very significant. And that's how we started working in the past uh, couple of years. And now we have graduated to a level that we can really claim that we will be in a position to do it. Otherwise, uh, quite often, we always say that we have to create future ready talent, future ready engineers, but it's easier said than done. The reason is uh, whatever we feel today is the future will become uh, outdated by the time they graduate. And therefore, this future ready business has to be a constant business, you know, continuous business. And unless we are going to be continuously on the job in terms of training, retraining, reskilling, I think it, it is going to go nowhere. And that's where 
or all faculty members and students who have joined this particular platform today when uh, internship is going to be launched by the Microsoft. My appeal to all of you is unless we become the uh, collaborative learners and unless we become lifelong learners, I think no one is going to help us. We have to help ourselves because uh, someone from Microsoft or someone from GitHub or some companies will come and give you some lectures on AI in IoT, in big data, in in cloud computing, in cyber security, and, and that is for what is the existing state of art of today. And certainly immediately it will create employability. It will also help you in creating your own entrepreneurial journey if you want. But if you go down a couple of years down the line, whatever you had learned from even this such kind of internship is going to be outdated. So you have to be watchful and keep looking at all possible platforms where you can keep learning. And therefore learning should be a lifelong one. And this should be a joy. You know, this new education policy beautifully explains in, right from school education that our, uh, the whole structure of education where the emphasis was on rote learning and uh, what we call it as examination system has to be moved away. How we encourage students to learn through stories, through games, through toys, right from childhood, you know, at the age of three onwards and allowing a child to ask questions. You know, this is another thing which we have missed out. In our ancient scriptures, we always used to have a dialogue between the teacher and the student and there are huge number of uh, uh, such kind of uh, examples given that very trickish questions are asked by the student which teacher does not know. He will also introspect, find out that answer and give it. But today in our classrooms to colleges, very rare, <coughs> rarely do we see students asking a question. The reason is if you ask a question or she asks a question, many times we snub them uh, either saying that it is a very simple question or or uh, don't you know so much and all that kind of stuff. And so we are dissuading them from asking questions. So I think this is fundamental change which is required through education system and the new national education policy talks about that. Second part is our examination which was based on rote learning should move away to understanding of the subject to critical thinking, analytical ability, data analytics. If we are all able to create question bank which will ask such questions, students will know that textbookish knowledge is not going to be helpful and therefore internship we make it and uh, mandatory but during internship experiential learning you know hands on training on not only software hardware but how do we use it and where do we apply it when students start learning it it will be an exciting journey of education otherwise it's all rote learning which is very boring and therefore uh, only because the classroom attendance rule of the university that 75 percent classes you have to attend they will come and attend otherwise uh, 75 percent of the time they are outside the classroom uh, roaming around in the in the in the cloud you know <laughs> and then they will be hardly be attentive in the classroom but uh, pandemic also helped us in understanding the real interest of the student you know in the classroom environment even though teacher is in front of you many times students are not attentive Whereas in an online mode where you, there is no one controlling or regulating, because you are not even seeing the faces of the students. So it is all the more difficult. So those teachers who have been very clear in their mind, you know, in terms of what they want to deliver in the class and how they can make the class interesting. We have found that thousands and thousands of students are like honey bee, you know, that goes to a flower and then sits there same way our students are magnetically attracted to such classes and they learn. So for learning, it is not necessary that always face to face is necessary. It also of course helps much better, but it is the nature of teacher actually how they engage and engagement in terms of internship, giving hands on exercises, problems which are relevant today. They will be able to immediately appreciate you know whatever is happening in the society in and around if a student is watchful they will be understanding the problems and therefore they will be tempted to find solution to the problems using the knowledge that they have today and this is how we will create future ready talent and uh, we don't have to hunt much actually then they will be all of them will be future ready and that is what should be our goal and i once again thank you all uh, indrani mehak rohini dhiraj sandeep uh, vishesh 
and of course uh, sandhya and kirti who have been here with us and in our journey uh, let us have a collaborative journey because it's a joint responsibility of all of us to make the nation proud that we are creating future ready talent and engineers thank you very much thank you so much for your kind and wise words uh, dr sahasrabuddin i will now introduce the next esteemed guest which is uh, dr chandrashekar budda who is the chief coordinating officer aicte ministry of education he leads the national education alliance for technology neet ministry of education Inter internship enterprise portal artificial intelligence language translation project social justice ministry scholarship project indian knowledge systems and distributed 450 crore free digital content resources to higher education students and various student upskilling initiatives over to you dr budda for your words of wisdom for our students you all uh, as you know now the entire world became a digital world so in, in within that 1 trillion digital opportunities are available for indian professionals and indian uh, students by 2025 so it's an amazing opportunity for uh, indians because we are very strong in maths and science it is going to result 1.3 million upcoming digital opportunities across the globe so if you see from the demand point of view it is a 20x demand for digital skills by 2024 you may be wondering from where i'm getting all this information this is there on the future skill prime portal so so i see a different prospect i see see there are four different generations are living side by side in current um, history you know one is the traditionalists and the second one is boomers the third one is generation x and the fourth one is millennial so moving from right me generation to a whatsapp me generation you know this is an amazing transformation of the world is what where we are living in and creating a modern fair frameworks is very challenging as a new normal is technology driven so that's where i see and i'm happy to see this future skill prime platform because this is a skilling ecosystem because see we are moved from a, a from a from a educational qualification based demand to a skill based demand that's where i see the future skill prime platform which has this capability and and identified all the emerging technologies i mean i have uh, you know when i go through this website i i was so happy because one is they are covering cloud computing internet of things virtual reality artificial intelligence blockchain 3d printing and modeling emerging technologies big data and analytics cyber security uh, robotic process automation web and mobile development and marketing and lots of other ingredients you know which needs for this uh, 21st century skills so that's where and, and the beauty of this portal is this is a combination of a government and industry i mean if you see the industry is helping and giving their requirements and from a government side we are facilitating it i think what a beautiful combination platform we have created for national skilling ecosystem you know for the digital technologies and this is another uh, beautiful thing about this platform is the end to end skilling and assist from assessment to certification because see lots of platforms are there either they assess you or they will give you certification but here the beauty is it will provide you an opportunity on working on real time projects and providing you an opportunity to assess yourself to see where you stand and provide an opportunity on a certification side so this is a wonderful platform in collaboration of meti nascom future skills act and various other organizations i think you know this is a beautiful thing where i see that everyone working together and and when we are speaking with uh, with microsoft and nascom we are so happy that they are open minded and they are accepting our suggestions we are saying you know we want you know our students want this kind of an opportunities and they are open for it we are so thankful to every every partner in this initiative i mean from microsoft from github because i i'm i'm, I'm favorite of github because every day we use it uh, you know left and right and i know i see a real value of github in this entire process because executing a project is one thing but creating a repository is for future use and and utilizing this for a social good because what happens is you may have lots of knowledge 
but what is the point if you don't share that knowledge with others so here you can publish all your knowledge repository with help of github and github can be shared with others and others also contribute on your so on your solutions what a beautiful combination we are creating i see that the india along with our students and industries we all are creating a vasudeva kutumbakam one side and the other side we are creating a best of the best like i see that you know uh, number one uh, country in the entire world and i thank uh, everyone for giving this opportunity to our students and i request nascom not only concentrate only on the it side because this uh, what we see every student ever in our country is equal because in nep we have something called equality you know so let us give opportunities for non engineering uh, graduates also and diploma holders i request microsoft to come up with some kind of a plan for them because they, as you use ms excel ms word you know there is lots of opportunity for them also so can we do something for them you know please think about it and i thank uh, everyone for uh, giving this opportunity thank you very much and namaste to all thank you so much dr buda for your very perceptive and encouraging words uh, next our esteemed uh, uh, guest from whom we'll hear is dr rohini shrivatsa she is the national technology officer at microsoft india in her role she is responsible for driving innovation and growth through tech intensity across customers and partners in industry as well as government rohini began her career in r&d at at&t bell laboratories and has 25 plus technical and business publications in acm and i triple e and other journals she holds an mba from the wharton school of the university of pennsylvania and earned her phd in computer engineering from the university of texas at austin let us hear from dr rohini distinguished guests from the academia community and my dear students i am honored and privileged to be addressing this session today we are living in truly transformational times every aspect of our lives every industry every segment of the economy and our society are being shaped by digital technology in this digital economy it is crucial that we create a skills ecosystem that is preparing india's youth for the jobs of the future it is very important that india invests in that long term growth and inclusive development wherein the world is becoming increasingly digital over the years as we have worked on skilling we have approached a collaborative stance with different stakeholders across the ecosystem and our approach has been to take a 360 degree life cycle view to skilling so that we are touching every segment of the society from students to college students people who are in the workforce people who need reskilling the underserved across the ecosystem democratizing skilling is very connected to our mission at microsoft our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more the future ready talent program represents a joint commitment for building skills it aims to build equity by reducing the skills gap that is currently existing in the country but it is more than that it is also an internship opportunity and the design of the program is with the students at the center aicte has been at the forefront of leading change in many ways providing access to digital skills for youth across the country the future ready talent program is meant to equip students with internships and prepare them for jobs the program will equip 
over one and a half lakh students in India with skills in technologies like data and AI, cloud computing, cybersecurity, and other technologies. And the program is intended to connect learners more readily with new job opportunities. That has been the intent of the partnership that we are proud to collaborate with. The strong set of partners for this program who are all deeply committed to building a vibrant skilling ecosystem in the country. I would like to close by emphasizing that the skills gap in the country is an issue that requires a joint effort by all stakeholders. No single organization or institution can do this alone. It needs everyone to join hands and contribute. Now more than ever, we need to work in close collaboration to create a skilling ecosystem in the country that prepares everyone for a digital economy. I'm personally deeply inspired by this program, which is meant to empower so many of our students to prepare themselves for the economy of the future and achieve their potential. Thank you. Thank you so much to Dr. Rohini for her kind words. As our next esteemed guest, we have Ms. Kirti Seth, who is a business leader with over 30 years of rich experience in entrepreneurship, management, and driving change. Kirti is currently with NASCOM as the CEO for the ITITES Sector Skills Council. Prior to this, she was heading the prestigious Future Skills Prime project, a digital skilling initiative that is the partnership between the government of India and NASCOM. Previously, she was the CEO of the joint venture between Genpact and NIIT called NIIT Uniqua and then led global consulting and advisory team in India at NIIT. Over to you, Kirti, for your words of encouragement for our students. Namaste. Thanks, everyone. This is a wonderful occasion. I think everyone has pretty much said so. At uh, Future Skills Prime, uh, the program that has been referred to a lot, as Dr. Buddha said, it's an ecosystem. It is a place where people, it has become a place for people to come together. Uh, Rohini also referred to it to say, as we have grown, we have learned how to work with government, how to work with AICT, how to work with our the uh, NCVT, ha has, have learned to work with industry, with training providers. And at the center of it all is the learners for whom this massive opportunity awaits. You know, when we started, um, uh, when we started uh, Future Skills Prime, this was uh, the, the Ministry of IT. Uh, this was a, a joint venture between Ministry of IT and NASCOM. There was a big fear on the horizon that what's going to happen when all these technologies come and, uh, you know, ro robots are going to take over the earth and all jobs will disappear. This was three years ago. Even at that time, the World Economic Forum had published a report where they said, yes, jobs will go, but even more jobs will come and take their place. But at that time, there was a lot of fear. And the way the entire program was designed was from that, that what are, how can we save our students? How can we save our employees? Because their jobs will become irrelevant. Three years down the road, I'm happy to say that the whole, the whole, uh, rationale of what we are doing around skilling has changed. This is more about the opportunity rather than the fear. Companies are struggling to find students with the right talent. And that's why when even Professor Sashabud, they talked about it, that we have to become continuous learners. That is a reality. There are tons and tons of opportunities available for people who become continuous learners, people who become future ready. And that's why programs like this that we have, uh, you know, created along with Microsoft and all the partners that Microsoft has brought, brought together to this platform become so crucial. The vision of Future Skills Prime was to be a place where learners can find content that is based on industry defined and in government approved standards. Now, this is also really crucial because there's so much work, so much content out there. You can go to Google, you can say artificial intelligence and you will get the, the hits which will be in the millions. But what is what you follow? What should you 
and that is why when content is created when programs are designed that are in sync with these industry divine defined and government approved standards it gives the learner some comfort that a lot of thought has gone behind this and that's why i truly appreciate what microsoft has done where they actually aligned the content on this the program to the government standards and brought it together within whatever the guardrails of the ecosystem were their discussions with the aict discussions with nascom and industry what does in the and and also all the expertise that they bring on what industry wants out there is subsumed in this program that has been designed it was also it's also something that we recognize that learning is never really for learning sake there is always some motivation that 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 is behind the learning it is either something some job that you are planning to pursue some change that you want to go through something that is in your life that you want to get from all this learning and that's why this program again is very unique in the way it has built it has built the whole journey from learning from to internships and maybe even then to jobs new words have come into our lexicon as the world has transformed into the digital world whether it's remote working whether it's hybrid workplace whether it's adjacent skills whether it's alternate talent pool all of these things have gone into designing these kind of programs which are virtual which are hybrid which have a uh, people participating in terms of mentorship in terms of cloud based practice environments in terms of certifications that can lead to real jobs so as you see it's the real life which is now translating into programs that are very relevant for the digital opportunity that awaits us uh the you may have all read about the news about the trillion dollar digital uh, opportunity that india is striving for and that is the mission of future skills prime that how do we prepare our country for this trillion dollar digital opportunity it is programs like this that are based on the solid framework of a aligned curriculum of industry mentorship of experiential learning that is going to take us there and because these programs are based are nsqf level aligned and i'm sure enough academicians out there who understand the significance of nsqf level alignment you know that any institute that is autonomous or a deemed university or is an institute of national importance you can actually offer academic credits as well towards this internship completion please understand what this program is about and my colleague indran indrani is going to take you through um, i should say my partner indrani from microsoft is going to take you through the details of the program and apply your own lens to it to see how complete it is and how it can be a fantastic opportunity for your students and any learners out there to adopt and get ready for the digital future so with a big thank you to aicte to microsoft to all the partners who are part of this program questcorp ey github it's an amazing thing we've put together and i really look forward to seeing the massive uptake i i I've, i've heard some of the numbers and i already know there is great enthusiasm about this project i will not reveal any of that because i don't know how indrani wants to play it but i do know that there's been a lot of enthusiasm about it batch 1 is already closed and we're looking forward to the next batches as well but this is what we need to build as we go forward and as microsoft has partners with us i hope that we will have many more such opportunities coming up and we will partner with aict and the academic ecosystem to create a uh, india that is the global hub of talent for the digital technologies thank you thank you so thank much kirti your enthusiasm was very infectious <laughs> um i would uh, now like to introduce indrani who is a visionary leader with more than two decades of experience with more than a decade in microsoft she has held several leadership roles defining and executing sales and marketing strategy managing the pnl and consulting for learning solutions for corporate clients in her current role at microsoft she is responsible for leading the learning culture and skilling strategy for india and for driving overall execution for customers partners employees and also future generation skilling without further ado let me welcome ms indrani choudhury chief learning officer microsoft indrani over to you ah uh, indrani you are on mute uh, can you 
sorry for that. A very, very warm welcome to the launch of Future Ready Talent Program, a one of its kind virtual internship program. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, esteemed panelists, for being here and partnering with us. And it's an honor for me to take on from here and I get the privilege of unveiling the program benefits and the program structure so that all of you can make an informed decision which you um, you know you would be I'm sure proud of in the times to come. So let's start with a bit of a context as to why this program, what would you um, get out of this program? Uh, a little context in my current role, I'm also responsible for our customers and partner skillings of Microsoft. And the pandemic has actually accelerated digital transformation exponentially. Organizations worldwide, our customers, our partners are actually looking for cloud skills talent to embrace technology both for business continuity as well as for competitive advantage. And the latest uh, report I think uh, Dr. Buddha just mentioned, uh, it is as per NASCOM uh, that the de demand for tech skills is currently 8x than what we have available in the fresh talent pool, and it's only going to grow by to 20x by 2025. So the good news is that you've chosen the right program at the right time. So the most important goal that we have as part of this program is first to give you the learning opportunity. So today's organizations are either born in the cloud or have a definitive roadmap to for cloud adoption. And 95% of our Fortune 500 companies use Microsoft Cloud today. And by the way of this program, you will get the opportunity to learn the most in-demand cloud skills that the organizations are looking for. The second, we want you to get the industry flavor, solve the business challenges. LinkedIn data actually suggests that the rate at which different industries, non-tech industries are hiring tech skills is much higher than the rate at which technical skills, tech industries are hiring tech skills. And therefore we want you to equip, uh, be equipped with all the knowledge such that you can apply the tech skills that you learn and know about the business opportunities and challenges that different industries have and build solutions and solve for the business challenges. And last but not the least, we want you to become not only employees of big companies, but also be the entrepreneur um, to build innovative solutions. GitHub, as Dr. Buddha also mentioned, it's the most popular code repository for open source software. We encourage you to leverage the power of Azure, GitHub, all the tools that we are providing to you to build some solutions that can solve for the problems that most of the industries are facing and which will propel our country to be the world leaders, both in terms of ta talent as well as in terms of uh, solutions. If you can go to the next slide, uh, Maddie. OK, so let's look at what's in it for you. Uh, we just mentioned that this program and Dr. Rohini also said we have designed this program keeping you students at the center. We are giving you highly enriching experience so you will find that the navigation of this entire program is pretty much templatized in terms of learning paths. Um, and we have picked up the seven core courses in which will provide you the tech readiness that you will require to. You know, acquire the skills of the uh, that is in demand. We've also included industry readiness modules, and these are specially curated by our global advisory partner EY Ernst and Young, uh, and that will give you and trigger your thoughts on you. What is the business problem that our industries are facing? What are the challenges that they are facing or the opportunities that we haven't tapped? And that will help you to apply the knowledge that you uh, got over tech readiness and apply it to solve for a business problem. Of course, to now create that solution, you will need tools, you will need the platform, and therefore we bring to you the student developer pack from uh, GitHub that will give you the necessary credits. You'll get around $100 credits to start building the solutions, as well as there are other free developer toolkits that are provided. And um, I think uh, Initially, the starting of the conversation was that we want you to be encouraged with curiosity. You should ask the right questions. Professor uh, Shastra Bhuti also said that you, you know, 
we want you to keep learning or un, you know unveiling all the possibilities here and therefore what we are giving you is an unlimited community forum where you can ask questions we we will have ey mentors manning these um, so that you can get to solve for any problems that you are facing whether it is industry related or technology related and we will also have mentorship sessions in built into the learning path students who will complete this project and of course we do request you to put in your full commitment and your um, you know vest your energies in making successful projects and those who complete this will not only get the internship certificate but colleges can decide to provide credits as the curriculum is aligned to NEP. So I'll leave it to the co curriculum college decision makers to give the credits because as you heard, Katie, it is aligned to the NEP. Uh, and last but not the least, we know that, you know, after spending so much of energies and also creating these world class projects, we want to showcase those to our companies, our customers, partners who are asking for cloud skills. So we're bringing in again our uh, you know, industry partner, which is Quest Corp, who will come and arrange for the career fairs, whereby we'll bring in our customers and partners to look at what you have created. Those who are successful, it's a platform um, where you know, we are going to showcase our best talent to the people who require the talent. So with that, uh, Maddie, if we can just quickly go to the next one, and I'll just spend a few minutes to talk about the timelines, but do note that there is an orientation session uh, coming up soon on October uh, 29th. You should attend if you choose to uh, sign up. Uh, Maddie, if you can just go to the next slide, please. I think there's a problem with the space. Okay, so I don't know why I guess there is a problem in the lag. Uh, Maddie, if you can just unmute yourself and check if there is a problem with presentation or Gunjan, can you take on? Yes, Gunjan will be sharing the slide okay. here. Okay, so uh, while the pro you know slide comes up, I'll just give you that the program has four important phases. Phase one, immediately after this, Please get into the links, registration links that will be posted and Vishesh would be walking you through that. Please complete your registration. After the registration, there is an orientation <laughs> profile page that needs to be updated because registration doesn't get completed just by putting in your names. We we have different platforms whereby we need your details so that we can track the completion of the programs that you are doing, the learning that you're doing. So we want you to submit all the necessary credentials at the very beginning. So right now the gates are open. After this, please go ahead and sign up and uh, upload all the necessary formalities that the portal requests. It is user friendly. There are links on the portal which you, if you get stuck with any of the, uh, you know, how to's, those are all embedded. Phase two, if you are keen, you can get started with your learning right away, right now after your registration is uh, over. There is this technical learning plan that you have, and then there is this industry readiness. We have a window by which you have to complete this, but you can start today. Um, then the, after you've complete your learning, especially the industry and some part of the mandatory tech readiness, is when you can start thinking about the programs or the projects that you will submit and start defining the project synopsis, which are the services that you will bring in, because it we have actually made it very clear and transparent as to what would be the uh, entry criteria or the qualification criteria for to, you to make it to the internship successfully. So therefore, just look at the rubrics in which you will be measured. Think about how you're going to apply the industry skilling tech readiness and build the solutions. Work collaboratively because this is no, you know, gone are the days when we used to work in silos. Collaboration is the key. Uh, you have the peers from the first batch. You will have peers from this batch. You will have peers whom you don't know. The GitHub community allows you to tap onto any subject matter expertise, learn from them. 
discuss with them and build your projects. And finally, we want you to submit the internship and then there will take a window to evaluate against the criteria that we have published. Once you get that, uh, you are successful. The results will be announced and you can download the internship certificate right from the portal, which is a future ready talent program. Uh, somewhere in the month of February, uh, we will come back with dates. Uh, the career fair will be hosted by Monster Quest, uh, and we will uh, talk about that more in the subsequent uh, you know, sessions that we have. With that, I also wanted to dovetail here um, into a fireside chat with some of the key partners who are making this program successful. As many of our esteemed speakers talked about, we are in this program being supported by a group of affiliate partners to make this program relevant for you. And I have the pleasure of inviting esteemed guests from our affiliate partner groups uh, who are equally committed and vested to make this program relevant for you and the best decision that you, you can ever make in for the career ahead. And my first guest here is Sandeep Ketan who is a national leader for EY's Financial Accounting Advisory Services in India. He has a rich experience. We lost your audio. Indrani, I think we lost you. We lost your audio. We lost your audio, Indrani. Uh, we are checking with her. Just give us a minute. Yeah, till uh, she joins back, I see that. See, the beauty of this platform is one: we are making the student technology ready. You know, the twenty-first technology ready. The second thing is we are making them industry ready. I mean, you know, I just want to put it in a very simple words because one, we are making them twenty-first century skills ready. The second one is we are making them the industry ready. Third, we are providing them a student development pack, you know, which is worth of $100 for free of cost. And fourth one, we are giving them a repository where they can store, with, where they can share their knowledge with others, with society. The fifth one uh, is mentoring. Very, very important because what happens, students doesn't normally, you know, they just go away here and there because they don't focus. But the mentor is the one who can control them, who can make them focus. Beautiful platform, I think, which uh, we can we can take this platform in a very much larger scale in future. But we need to fine tune a bit, uh, you know, on the credit system side and all. But the rest, I think, it's a beautiful platform. Along with that, we need to travel across the country, uh, sir. I mean, chairman, sir. What I see is we are doing a lot of virtual. But I think we need to go and touch the students. We need to speak with them. We need to be uh, physically there and showcase some of the successful scenarios, how the academ academia can be merged with industry needs and a couple of case studies, successful case studies. I think you know this is one thing which we need to do along with the online fair, sir. So that's what I strongly feel. And from Government of India point of view, we are ready, we are open. We are open for all the sessions and we are ready to work with you along with the, not only the MNCs, we are ready to work with the six crore MSMEs we have in our country. So that let us all work together uh, and I hope uh, Indrani ji will come back very soon or uh, Madhi ji, can we continue with the next uh, speaker? Uh, Buddha ji, I just want to reiterate uh, the problem is during pandemic, there was a big question mark on physical visit to the industry or wherever it is, and therefore there was absolutely need for virtual internships. But having learned the virtual mode of uh, engagement, which has been as good as in the real mode, we have large numbers, you know, all of these numbers, you know, 1 million students coming every year into the system. And for every year, you know, three years they have to be provided internship means three million. You know, it is not a matter of joke to provide internship opportunities for three million, four million students. And therefore, if some of them are able to make effective use of technology and provide virtual internship, we must give weightage to that as well is what. Uh, ultimately, human to human interaction, meeting each other is, is certainly important. We never can give less importance to that. But in a given situation, we need to navigate 
in a manner that we will be able to satisfy internship requirements of all the students of uh, India. Actually. That is what we are making it uh, open, you know, that we will give weightage to even virtual internships is what I have written. But this is a doubt in the minds of many people. Will it be valid? Will it also carry credits or not? If you have worked, worked enough and you have really created a project which will really be useful to society or your institution organization, that is what they were required to do. So I, I don't think there is any problem in that case. So we will always welcome a physical face to face type of internship. But if not possible, even virtual should be given the same weightage and value. Otherwise, we are not going to serve to all the students. Hey, I'm back and I don't know. This is technology glitch. I'm so sorry for this uh, interruption and uh, did people hear me on Sandeep's introduction or should I start all over again? I think I think uh, Indrani, you're you, in the you middle. Brief, you briefly reiterate. Yeah. Briefly. Great. So um, just I don't know where you uh, I got dropped off and I was happily speaking, but I just thought I it is really a pleasure for me to introduce to you the group of affiliate partners, the industry stalwarts who are backing us up into making this program really relevant for you as well as I'm sure this will be one of the best decisions you make in your career ahead. And my first guest here is Sandeep Ketan, who is also the national leader for Ernst & Young's Financial Accounting Advisory Services in India. He has a rich experience of over 20 years in the advisory and consulting industry. Yeah. Uh, a yeah. CA by profession, he has also done his US CPA and company secretary courses and is a proud alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad. So hi, Sandeep. Hello, hi. Hi, Indrani. Can so, you hear me? Um, yeah, Sadeep, you just heard me yeah, and Sandeep, I you just heard mentioned me. that as per LinkedIn's resources, the rate at which the um, non tech industries are hiring tech tech specialists is much higher than the tech companies hiring tech professionals themselves. So how is Ernst & Young equipping students of the future ready talent program to get industry ready so that they can really be productive from day one? Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Nirani. So I think first I want to congratulate uh, the entire team uh, in terms of putting together an outstanding program and, and I hope uh, that uh, student community in a way will benefit uh, out of this program and this is going to be one of the kind of industry leading program, uh, you know, from uh, from making students future ready or industry ready, uh, you know, from from that perspective. I think uh, coming to the question what you asked, uh, you know, I think uh, every sector um, uh, what we deal with or industry uh, in a way has realized uh, is that technology is the way to move forward. Uh, and when you look at the tech industry, tech industry purpose is to, of course, serve the non tech industry right uh, from that perspective. And of course, uh, you know, serving the entire tech ecosystem as well. Uh, but that is where I think we're seeing a significant amount of realization within the uh, non tech industry as well that they need to, in a way, build uh, significant capabilities, uh, you know, in a way to deal with the challenges ahead uh, from the whole digital disruption or technology advancement is what we all are kind of looking at. So coming to, I think from your on, on the question on cloud, right? The cloud computing itself is being extensively used, right? By the tech and the non-tech industry uh, traditionally. And, and cloud is one big computer, right? Uh, uh, which is available, uh, you know, whosoever in a way is leveraging uh, the infrastructure or the platform as being provided by leading companies like Microsoft. So, so traditionally, traditionally the organizations uh, uh, used to host uh, their business critical applications on the on-premise uh, data center, right? Uh, and that uh, thinking, uh, in a way, as you as you also mentioned, has kind of dramatically changed in pandemic, uh, where everybody is is in a way looking to in a way move to a virtual uh, kind of a data center. So, otherwise, managing their own data center requires a huge amount of investment. So, uh, and that is where the non-technology companies are improving their efficiencies by refocusing on their core areas and by moving to the cloud platforms as provided, let's say companies like Microsoft, uh, where Azure is uh, industry leading uh, platform uh, from from that perspective. 
and through the through the future ready talent program um, uh, what is ey is trying to do uh, ey is trying to intend to enable the students uh, beyond their classroom learning by providing them the opportunity to relate the knowledge uh, to the real world experiences for this purpose uh, we have created four industry trend videos covering the key challenges as faced by the organization uh, the current technology landscape scope for innovation and also identify few technology solution to optimize their operations the video covers multiple case studies on how cloud technology is proactively used to enhance the business operations using microsoft azure we have additionally created a video on microsoft azure overview which will give them a fair idea on different azure services i think we have specifically created these videos to look at how azure is enabling automation and business transformation in the industries like healthcare education sustainability and finance so covering a you know four key sector industry uh, what we believe uh, in a way is going to have a lot of focus relevance from a student perspective so we have also tried to explain in very simple language how these industry function the challenges the role of technology to streamline the business processes and benefits of adapting the technology enabled solution so the examples i uh, talked about right how machine learning is enabling the industry to accurately predict the future demand scenario risk or how artificial intelligence is improving the operational efficiency by taking quick actions based on real time scenario so it's it's going to be a very very powerful tool um, in a way for student community to kind of go through learn understand and eventually apply um as they kind of uh, start delving into uh, real world um, uh, experiences so as part of the internship our intent is then to apply the tech skills to create projects solutions within these industries to address the opportunities to solve for a problem i think that is what at the end the projects will be scored upon thanks thank you so much sandeep and um, i hope uh students you will start realizing how much of commitment from different industry stalwarts are backing you up in this program so please it is going to require your commitment we want you to waste your energies but certainly the roi of your efforts will not go waste uh so with that i would then call upon our next affiliate partner and i would love to invite thiraj uh who is also Uh, an evangelist a leader who heads the education and government engagements at github india he is also the global program management of github campus program and prior to this he was the head of enterprise marketing at microsoft india so our my ex colleague uh, and with a strong customer orientation he has been instrumental in conceiving out of the box customer first engagement ideas with his strong roi and impact focus So Dheeraj, welcome. And um, hi. So GitHub is a home to millions of developers, not only in India but worldwide. So can you give some tips and tricks on how students of the Future Ready Talent Program should leverage to get the most out of the community and develop the project successfully for the internship? thank you indrani and again uh, a big congratulations to you for uh, spearheading this initiative and getting getting all of us together on this platform uh, so you know all lot of our previous speakers spoke about the importance and the benefits that student can derive uh, from the from the from the program that we have uh, so i'll not talk much about it i'll hold my thoughts on that uh, coming to your question GitHub, as you mentioned, we are the world's largest software development platform, which is used by developers. We have 65 million developers who are using GitHub every day worldwide. Uh, you know, we call software development as uh, as a team sport. Uh, so, apart from having the tech skills, uh, if you have collaborative skills, and that's what you know, you also mentioned uh, some time back, uh, you need tech skills, you need collaborative skills. and you need to leverage the work which is being done everywhere you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel today when it comes to software development uh so leverage the work which is out there on github create your tech create your code create your innovation uh and at the same time you can also contribute back to the work that is happening now this is the power of open source and you know estimates today say that 
over 85 to 90 percent of modern software development leverages open source. So, so if you're not a open source champion, uh, students, you're going to miss a lot of things. So under this program, uh, GitHub is, you know, as, as, as you mentioned, Indrani, we are offering the GitHub student developer pack, which is worth $200,000 per student. So that's a huge amount of tech uh, GitHub is offering to every student participating in this program. Now in this pack, you know, there is something for everyone. So let's say if I'm a, a, a game developer, I have the best game development tools available in this pack. Uh, I want to leverage cloud. I have Azure that it's available in this pack. I want to work on IoT. I want to work on ro uh, robotics, blockchain. There is everything for every student. Uh, so you need to really leverage this pack. That is number one. Number two, the platform itself, GitHub platform itself. And you know, the fact is today, GitHub is being used by recruiters uh, who actually come and see what is the work that every student is doing. So it's my CV, it's my public prof tech profile uh, available to everyone. So I can come and actually you know, see that what the work student has done and what, what work he or she has contributed to others. Um, and recruiters are really leveraging this big time. So, so please you know, use this feature of GitHub, um, update your README profile, make sure that your work is speaking and the world is your audience today uh, when it comes to your github profile and finally is the power of community uh, that is being offered here uh, discussions as some of the students in fact most of the students are leveraging today as part of this program uh, is where you actually come and talk to each other collaborate with each other solve your problems help others to solve their problems um, so platform, the discussion platform, and then you have a lot of mentors available uh, in the world who can actually help you to grow in Excel. So to summarize, Indrani, uh, as I said, tools, which is the student developer pack, GitHub as a platform, uh, and second is the power of community. Make sure that you're shining, make sure that you're, you're updating all your stuff here, and then you're leveraging the community that is available to you under this program. So I'll, I'll, I'll wish all the best to all the students and all the teachers that we have on the call. Uh, please make sure that you leverage everything that is being offered under this program. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dheeraj. And so just to summarize, we have tech skills, the latest and the best uh, technical content that is being available to you, industry skills through the industry readiness content that we are doing at the project mentoring that we are bringing to you. And third is the collaborative skills as well as you know the utilizing and leveraging the entire community to help you grow and also apply all the skills that you're bringing to this or acquiring and build up applying it because application is the focus uh, with that now that you you know about all the learning part next is let's look at how can you leverage um, the career fair that we have talked about, the platform that we are getting so that there is a connection between the skills and the employability. So with that, uh, let me invite Shekha Garissa, President Emerging Business and Chief of Strategy at QuestCorp. He has experience of 15 plus years spanning multiple entrepreneurial and corporate leadership roles. He was also my ex-colleague, uh, having worked with Microsoft, McKinsey, PNG, and I am Lucknow Lucknow alumnus. Shekhar is the CEO of Monster, APAC, and Middle East. So, Shekhar, Quest is a leading workforce staffing agency for India and even outside of India. As part of the Future Ready Talent Program, how are you planning to highlight the talent? that you know successful on to, uh, interns will bring in how are you planning to highlight the, them to the companies who are requiring the cloud skills talent can you just throw some light and bring in the excitement thanks indrani thank you so much for having me here uh, it's been it's been presence of so many professors and academicians i feel like i'm back to the classroom first and uh, and I also feel like I have not really left Microsoft, you know, thanks to the number of conversations we've been having together. So, so it's lovely to be here. Uh, uh, I come in from a different perspective, obviously being part of Quest now for a while. Uh, you know, we are uh, 
not just India's largest private sector employer. Very recently, we've actually become the top five employer <coughs> staffing company in the world. So we talk about uh, you know 400, close to 400,000 people that we employ on our roles. We go through a few million profiles every year to hire them. Uh, we also run some of the largest uh, talent acquisition platforms in the country for white collar and blue collar. We have more than 1,000 recruiters in, on board in our organization. <laughs> so, you know, so offer talent is something that you know we very uh, very closely associated with, and I can safely say that uh, students on the call should consider themselves most fortunate to be part of this period of of time. You know, uh, we've always spoken about the need for great talent, work for talent, how companies go out of the uh, to hire, but almost all of us, I guess, will be unanimous in saying that this is the best time to be a techie. And there's absolutely no two ways about it. So there's opportunity that's huge. Uh, and from that perspective, you know, every good resource who differentiates themselves from their peer group uh, can definitely feel like they're going to have the best ROI ever in their careers if they do that. So, uh, and also proliferation of digital platforms and tools like this also means that access to great quality learning, uh, you know, communities as well is so, so from that perspective, you know, uh, good to see so many students expressing their interest to be part of the platform, and I and I really hope that everyone gives in their all to it to maximize the learning and opportunities that this platform provides. I know a few things that are very important. You know, if you look at it from an from an employer's perspective, right? Uh, one, uh, I would urge the students not to restrict the usage of the platform to just doing the internship. From our perspective. We'll make sure that you have a lot more learning opportunities through through advanced skilling programs, etc. Uh, second, equally important thing is to credentialize yourself very well. Every recruiter out there wants to know more about each candidate so that they can make the right hiring decision. So don't stop your journey with learning. Ensure you're taking the right uh, you know assessments, training, uh, certifications that you could possibly so that you can uh, differentiate yourself from the rest of the folks who are competing for the same opportunities. Uh, the third and equally important thing is preparation. You know, while we could do all of this, it's also important to have, you know, specific interview, uh, uh, interview mode preparation as they call it, you know. So from that perspective, we'll make very rich content and tools available on the platform in terms of uh, making the right resumes, putting your right digital profile across, uh, your mock interview questions, uh, you know, live mock interviews with experts, master classes on how to, how to present the best of yourself in pressure interviews, etc. Uh, the last but not the least, you know, you can uh, you can be rest assured that we work with more than 10,000 organizations who are actively looking for the best possible talent that they can find, and we will ensure that the talent from this platform is discovered by all of those organizations in the career fair. So that's our commitment to the platform, and uh, you know, we're someone who has enough interest both with the candidates as well as with uh, with the companies who are looking for talent. So. We are very excited by the possibilities that the platform can provide. And so we are all in. Uh, look forward to the journey. Thank you, Shekhar. And I'm sure this is the most exciting reward that can uh, people can expect. Just a quick disclaimer um, that this opportunity is of being showcased to the employers is for people who successfully complete their internship can also take in more industry certifications and certainly there are many more offers if you'll see it in the platform that we will try and get deep discounting for you uh, so that you can also acquire industry certifications um, and make sure that what Adhira just now mentioned that your projects should be you know something that you can showcase so your github the projects that you build should be part of your github repository and uh, then it is made you know, may the best one win. So there is, I would call it like more like a speed dating. You have the talent, you have the people who are looking for talent, may the best one win. Um, so with that, uh, I just thought, uh, you know, students, it is not an easy program. I would just talk about the fact that you will need to put in energies. You will need to have show commitment and invest in, you know, really invest in this uh, journey. Uh, I also wanted to address one more thing that Dr. Buddha said that, you know, do you want to limit it to only engineering student and for all faculties who have multi stream, um, you know, colleges and universities? No, it is not only for the engineering students. In fact, 
um, you know, I, I keep taking my own uh, journey as a reference. I don't even belong to the STEM um, colleges. I have done my graduation and my post graduation in economics, and here I am leading the scaling charter for the you know technology uh, leader which is Microsoft and I have taken all certifications of Microsoft at the fundamentals level so it's I mean I think anybody can start anybody should become everybody should become a techie so that they can really leverage and this is the right starting point so don't limit yourself that this is only meant for engineers no not at all start the journey know how much you have the aptitude and just embark on this with that i'll give back the yeah sorry dr i just want to add one point so who all are working with you they are getting promotion i hope very soon we will also get some promotion and my chairman sir is listening <laughs> so i see see ernest and young is involved in uh, their service lines are like consulting strategy transactions taxation which is very common across the globe I request to EY to give more opportunities to our students and uh, maybe we can have a separate session with them and try to understand more and how we can work together on those areas also. Because you, I see that uh, if, if imagine our Indian students uh, are in a big good positions in consulting strategy and transactions, what kind of they can do lots of help to our fellow Indians, right? I think that's again, I see a amazing opportunity so I request Indrani ji to uh, let us have one separate session uh, with them and GitHub every day we are using uh, and I really love the way Deeraz ji presents uh, because we had lots of meetings with uh, with Deeraz ji and the beauty of them is even uh, Deeraz ji we are not only putting our code repository on GitHub whenever I take into you I will ask every student to push their code on GitHub and then I review it and then only I will take a technical interview. So that's the way I mean, you know, we now we all are using and and see the beauty of this platform. 56 million users on a daily basis. I think, you know, amazing platform, but we need to make sure all our students also be part of this GitHub initiative. I think we will go on a on much more uh, detailed discussions with each and every region of our uh, country. And let us have detailed discussions with various universities and various institutes and let us try to make them understand the advantage we have on the GitHub, you know, from the institute point of view, from the student point of view, from the faculty point of view and from the society point of view. And let us take it forward. I thank everyone for uh, joining this beautiful session and giving opportunity to our institutes, faculty as well as mainly our students. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you. And um, with this, I the session is not yet over because the next steps would be taken by Vishesh. So Mehek, over to you to introduce Vishesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Buddhayan and Rani. Uh, so next up, to understand the program a bit more and for the next step for students to start their journey of this internship program, I would like to welcome Vishesh Bhargava, Product and Strategy Lead for Emerging Businesses at Quest Corp. And I am Calcutta alumnus, he has experience of tech and non-tech roles at organizations like Microsoft and the Department of Telecom. Vishesh, over to you. Thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Okay, next slide, Mary. So yes, so uh, we'll just uh, de delve a little deeper into uh, what what should a student expect or uh, the questions that students might have around, you know, is this program for me? Apart from being uh, quite effort intensive, uh, as Indrani pointed out, just we have kept a simple eligibility. If you are an Indian resident uh, who has graduated in 2021 or it will be graduating in 22 or 23, uh, you are eligible for this program. Uh, I think it, all you need is an interest uh, to have your internship or an exposure around the tech world uh, and you're good to go. Uh, next slide, Mary. OK, so I'll just take a quick uh, uh, stab at the critical go do's that we have. Uh, and I think so there are some questions around where do I go ahead and register for this particular internship. You'll see the uh, link at the bottom, which is futureReadyTalent.in. 
uh, once you go ahead and register, uh, you will have access to what is what is the learning uh, page of the platform, uh, and you will see all the four phases and the sections that Indrani uh, mentioned during the uh, earlier part of the webinar. Uh, the first and the most critical piece is to complete your orientation, which includes a little bit details around your uh, institute that you're a part of, uh, as well as some other platform related details so that uh, you are able to leverage all the uh, all the best that each of the platforms which are participating uh, have to offer. Uh, once you have completed your orientation uh, uh, details, uh, there is an option of joining the orientation session on 29th. But if you feel you are ready, you can go ahead and delve deeper into the industry videos uh, that we have from EY. You will be able to understand the various problems or the ways uh, uh, you, know, you can solve using technology, the different problems of the industries. And then using Future Skills Prime and the uh, content at Microsoft Learn, you can go through a curated list of courses that will help you best address and understand what all the best that tech has to offer. And with the understanding of the industry issues, as well as the uh, technical uh, solutions that you can offer, we will quickly move on to the uh, project piece. But uh, before that, you will need to ensure that uh, you are logged in and you have the basic uh, hygiene factors in of being logged in both into Future Skills Prime and Microsoft Learn so that you get the credit back of the efforts that you put in. Uh, and obviously to build the project, you will need uh, the student developer pack, uh, which you will give, be uh, getting on behalf of GitHub. Uh, and now with the understanding of the industry, the uh, technology capabilities and having the right tools, you can, uh, you can now kickstart your own project. Uh, and uh, you know, give a little bit synopsis around what what your project uh, would be. Uh, once you've started working on the project, you will definitely have your peers uh, talking to you, and you can get take guidance from your peers on the uh, discussion boards from GitHub, uh, and then go ahead to submit your project. Your projects will then be evaluated, and the uh, students who are successfully uh, who successfully complete this internship will be able to download their own certificates. So uh, this is just a quick walkthrough around uh, what all is necessary, and you will get different prompts at various parts of the platform so that uh, you don't miss out on anything. Uh, so you know that that's all I had to uh, cover. And uh, uh, you know, I would like to you know just to close this section, I would just like to thank uh, all the leaders who took out their time uh, and you know gave us the words of uh, guidance and encouragement. Uh, and you know, I would just urge all the learners uh, who are watching this to head to future www.futureadytalent.in, uh, register yourself, and complete your orientation so that you can kickstart your internship. Thank you so much, Vishesh, for uh, helping students walk through about their critical next steps. Um, I think there were some questions uh, we received on chat and it may be helpful for us to address a couple of those questions. So Gunjan, may I request you to uh, share those questions and we can take some time for Q&A. Thanks, Mehek. Uh, so I think few questions are already being answered by Vishesh, uh, which is on to uh, how students can register. What is the website? So what we're going to do is we're just going to post the address to the website. The registrations are on. The students can go and they can register for this. One question has come in that how they should register, which is like the students should go onto the page and they can register and then institutes can kind of tell their students that this is uh, the step and they, this is how they can register. Uh, because the questions have not come on the chat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute the people who have raised their hands so that they can ask questions. So and I would request the panel that if they can take up those questions and they can help the participants with their question. So just give me a minute. I'm going to unmute them. So we have Shubham Surana and I'm just going to unmute Shubham. If you're there, please uh, ask your question. You are being unmuted. You can unmute yourself and you can ask your question. OK, I think Shubham can't hear us and Shubham is not able to unmute himself. Maybe uh, I'll just go to the next person. Uh, we have Nikhil M with us. 
Nikhil. I'm just going to allow the mic to you. You can unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Whether uh, this uh, intense is helpful for mechanical engineering or not? If yes, in what way? Uh, Shubham, your voice was cracking a little. Can you repeat your question? Hi, we request you to repeat the question. Hello. Was that Nikhil? Maybe Nikhil can uh, type in the chat. Whether window. this internship is is helpful for mechanical engineers? FS in what way, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, Nikhil, it's a very good question. See, uh, there are uh, two types of engine uh, internships. What I see, one is a core engineering internship opportunities. The second one is a non-core engineering internship opportunities. But what we requested Microsoft as every industry, every sector, you know what industry call it as a sector, has a digitized format. Let's say there is an engine sitting in one of the one of the automobile industry and a mechanical engineer wants to access it. So in till 20th century, there is no way that you can access it. But now there is something called digital twinning. So you can take a take a digital format of that physical machine and you can work out on that uh, on the digital format of a physical mission and you can fine tune the entire process and you can resubmit so similar kind of opportunities that's where uh, you know the one of the slide was very very clear saying that we are not only enable you from the technology point of view we will give you the industry problem so that you are industry ready so when we say industry ready it is not only the it industry it is the industries, you know, where we have automobile industry, healthcare industry, uh, telecom industry, banking industry, manufacturing industry, IT industry. I mean, you know, all kind of industries, every industry using digital technologies nowadays. So example, if you take the cloud, right, the cloud is utilized by almost every business sector. So it is very important for irrespective of your engineering stream, it is very important to, to understand how it works. And having said that, yes, some of the internship opportunity in, in this will definitely help you, even though you are a mechanical engineer, but you can understand the digitization part of that mechanical sector. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that response. We have Dr. R. Renu. Uh, Ma'am, if you can just unmute yourself and can ask your question. Dr. Renu, can you unmute yourself? I have given you a yeah. mic access. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Actually, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, diploma students has the eligibility to attend this second of internships. So could you repeat your question? Uh, could you repeat your question once and can you be a little louder? Yeah, will diploma students have the eligibility to attend this kind of internship? Because in that eligibility, it has shown that only graduate and postgraduate students have the eligibility to attend the program. So will they do it for diploma? Sir, what we are requiring is uh, they should have a valid, uh, you know, Basically, they should be joining the workforce from 2021, uh, 2022 and 2023. And then any educational institute, higher educational institute, even if it's a um, diploma, would be eligible. As I just said, it is not necessarily restricted to uh, engineering students. We are opening it to the non-engineering graduate, but do note that there will be a lot of tech uh, skilling uh, in the purview of industry. So. As long as students are committed and they have this quest for acquiring this knowledge, just the entry criteria mentioned by uh, Vishesh in his presentation is what needs to be kept in mind. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Rani. Thanks. Uh, Nikhil, we'll go next with you. Uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask your question. I think we finished with Nikhil, I think. Yeah. Uh, that was Shubham. So I think Nikhil is left. 
in the meanwhile, Nikhil is asking a question. There's a question that has come in, uh, come in which is basically, is there a fee attached to this program? I can take that. Uh, there is no fee, absolutely. So all the uh, services are, or rather this internship program is free. However, uh, should you want to take up industry certification separately, which obviously adds to your credentials, uh, there would be a subsidized certification being offered to you through the offers page. Otherwise, from the program perspective, right from the learning to the submission of the project, there is no fee associated. Thanks, Nidrani. Uh, I think the majority of the questions were around this, which has been answered. So thank you all. Over to you, Mehek. Thank you so much uh, to our esteemed guests for sharing their vision about uh, India as a digital skilling nation of the world and to all the faculty and students who have very enthusiastically participated. I wanted to, towards the end of the program, I wanted to hand it over to Dr. Sandhya for her closing remarks and encouraging students to participate enthusiastically in this internship program, which has been brought to you by this collaboration. Uh, thank you, Mehek. It's been awesome listening to all the industry leaders and uh, blessed by Professor Sahasrabhate as well as Dr. Buddha. So you find actually at your doorstep an opportunity now to have an industry aligned curricula, a mentorship from industry and tech experts, internship com uh, completion certificate. You will have actually on demand learning and an exclusive virtual career fair at the end of it subsequently when it comes. So this idea of a virtual internship has really given you an opportunity for scale and quality as two sides of the same coin. So make the best of it and hopefully as all of you are under the AICT banner and this course basically is aligned to uh, NOSIS which are uh, NSQF aligned. Hopefully as a university you may make a decision which would be actually helpful not to overburden the student but include it as a part of your curricular program, formal curricular program and give award credits to it. So do look at this. Many universities and colleges have explored this so that it gets integrated. There's more meaning and value to this completion. So once again, thank you also, especially AICT and Microsoft and the NASCOM team for making this an event worth which will be a change maker because it's not often that uh, you can always be a part of the change but it's not often that you actually lead the change thank you once again everybody for making this a wonderful opportunity and all of you please uh, try and avail this thing thank you thank you everyone thank you ma'am how to register for this ma'am Vishesh. Vishesh, do you want to take this on, please? Uh, because there are many questions onto the platform. OK. So I I'll just answer. There is a link that is future ready uh, talent dot in. Please go on and uh, while you are speaking, just go to that portal on the right side. There will be a sign up, uh, you know, link. And then it's very intuitive. You'll be, uh, you know, guided. It's like a wizard. It will tell you what details to fill in, which are mandatory and which are optional. And after that, there is an orientation tab. Again, it's pretty uh, intuitive. Otherwise, if you get stuck, there are notes and, um, you know, PDFs with screenshots on how to go about. I will request everyone to go visit the website in case you are stuck in any uh, part. There is a help ID called support at the rate future ready talent dot in. We will also be planning an orientation session for all the signed up and registered students to understand how to uh, take the uh, full internship stepwise. So please wait out for that and we look forward to having all of you uh, with this successful internship experience. With that, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for your time. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.